Hello, this is the Solo Negocios video blog for the third week of 2022. We're going to begin with the news and indicators exposed during the week in Mexico. To begin with, uh, we had uh, news from the social security system exposing that there was 50,000 um, sick leaves permits, paid permits uh, for the labor force in Mexico, uh, given the pandemics, given the Omicron variant that is provoking a lot of infections among the companies in our country. And therefore they have that right, the employees to get a, a payment uh, on their sick uh, permit. And well, it's, it's a, a, an in incremental figure, a very big incremental figure, which is affecting financial systems of uh, the social security. In another news, uh, the OECD exposed that Mexico has uh, decreased or de decelerated its growth rate in the last four months. And this goes in line similar to what has IMEF shown in its Mex uh, IMEF indicator, uh, also in EHI, and also other figures showing that the Mexican public policies, along with the problems with the semiconductors globally, the chips, uh, well, we're having a hard time in the growth of the Mexican economy. And we will show a little bit more in a few minutes. Also, in terms of exports and not achieving the goals, at least 10 states in EHI is stating uh, have not reached their pre-pandemic data on exports mainly southern, uh, southern states of the country. But the truth is that uh, this is one of the burdens that are limiting how the uh, growth in our country might recover in, in the near term. At least uh, places like um, Quintana Roo, Campeche, the state of Mexico, Mexico City, and Puebla and Hidalgo were among the ones that heard it the most uh, lately. Well, in the indicators, specifically, we have this new indicator from INEGI. We have the, the, the GDP indicator, which is a, a quarterly indicator. But Mexico measures the monthly global economic activities indicator. And with a delay of two months, it shows how that month uh, showed in terms of growth. But like not in a full expression like the GDP. Well, now we have the... Um, advanced economic activity indicator, which shows during this month of January, what happened in December in terms of a forecast for the global economic indicator. Well, this uh, advanced economic uh, activity indicator for December is showing that the IGAE, the global one, will decrease 0.2%. And that implies that after a decrease, in, in November of the IGAE measure, well, we might have a negative, even a, probably a negative uh, GDP for the fourth quarter. That, that is worrisome for the Mexican economy. Um, also on, on more news, on Tuesday, uh, the, the Revenue Administration Services or the Revenue Management Services, SAT in Spanish terms, um, stated that the growth of uh, tax revenue was 1.1% in, in 2021. Um, 2021. It was 3.5 uh, um, trillion pesos in, in US, in, 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 in English, which uh, was stated for 3.3 in the tax law for the year 2021. So it was like 200 billion pesos more than was expected, mainly on income tax and value added tax. The special production services tax that we manage for alcohol, alcoholic beverages, tobacco products, uh, sugar products, and gasoline or other hydrocarbons, well, that one decreased 18%. And we will talk about about it a little bit ahead. Um, the working, uh, the, the Labor International Organization is uh, through its leader, Guy uh, Reader, 
It's saying that Mexico should prioritize their atten its attention over the informal segment of the economy. That this pandemic is showing how, in, in, uh, how inequitable and, uh, fr and weak the recovery is becoming. And with that strong informal economy that we have in our country, then it will be worse for those employees uh, living under those circumstances. And we will talk a little bit more with one of the INEGI indicators in a few minutes. Well, in another important information, the security, the European Public Security Survey for the fourth quarter of 2021 by INEGI showed that 65.8% of Mexicans uh, with ages 18 and older believe that it's not safe to live in their city. This is worrisome, but it improved a little bit from December 2020 when it was 68.1%. The cities where people fear the most is Fresnillo in Zacatecas, Ciudad Obregón at Sonora, Naucalpan de Juárez in, in the state of Mexico, Zacatecas in the state of Zacatecas, Irapuato and Uruapan in the state of uh, Guanajuato. The safest ones are San Pedro Garza and San Nicolás de los Garza at the state of Nuevo León, Los Cabos at Baja California Sur, Piedras Negras at Coahuila, Tampico at Maulipas, and Puerto Vallarta at Jalisco. So there is that information which is important also for the economic development. And one of the main reasons that uh, affected the production and services special tax in Mexico, say by the uh, federal authorities, is the stimulus for gasoline. In Mexico, we have market prices for gas, gas stations and, and, and the gasoline and diesel, but it shows this stimulus when the growth of the price is too strong. So this helps us as consumers to decrease the level of uh, spending during gasoline. But the situation during 2021 with the recovery on oil prices brought strong pressures into gasoline. Well, obviously in Mexico, it affected more. And then the government had to go there and provide this subsidy to Mexican consumers. On Wednesday, the Mexican Institute for Financial Executive exposed its uh, monthly press conference and the forecast for the 2021 growth that will be shown in advanced figures next week by INEGI and by the end of February on revised three years. Well, we expect that the 2021 growth will be 5.4%, far from the 6.5% expected by the Ministry of Finance back when they made the, the tax law for 2021. For 2022, we expect a growth of 2.7%. Inflation will grow 4.3% above the range of uh, acceptance by Banco de Mexico. The public debt will be 3.3%. Uh, the um, uh, monetary policy rate by Banco de Mexico will be 6.5%, 100 basis points more than uh, the, the, the closing uh, rate of 2021. Employment, formal employment at the Social Security, 450,000 employees given that 2.7% GDP great growth. Um, exchange rate at the end of the year, 21 pesos, 60 cents per dollar. This is kind of uh, an important uh, depreciation, but it is measured given the decrease or the potential decrease that it will occur if the Federal Reserve actually increases the Fed rates during 2022. And the current account, the trade account, a deficit of 5%, of, of 0.5%, 0.5%. And the growth rate for 2023, it will be 2.3% on the GDP measurement, which is weak. And given the situation is getting a lot weaker. And given the situation with the, the recession back in 2020 in Mexico, it will take us around four to six, six years to get pre-pandemic GDP data. The Bureau of Labor Statistics in the US on Wednesday exposed that the median weekly earnings in the nation's 160 million and 16 million employees, it's $1,010 in the fourth quarter 2021. This is important to understand that there was a 2.6% growth 
on the average income of these employees, but the inflation was 7%, so that's worrisome. The Energy Information Agency in the United States also showed on Wednesday the uh, inventories for crude oil without uh, strategic reserves, and it increased 500,000 barrels from previous week, and at 413.8 million barrels, it is uh, standing 8% below the five year average for this time of the year. Worrisome and increasing pressure on oil and obviously gasoline. Actually gasoline on the week increased one cent to 3.31 cents per gallon. Uh, and diesel went from uh, went uh, up seven cents to three dollars seventy three uh, US dollars per gallon in the United States in average. Another Inehi communication regarding the uh, labor in, uh, in the, the International Labor Organization uh, comment a few moments ago. Well, the indicators for occupation and employment with fifty nine million. Uh, people in economic activity out of 130 million inhabitants in the country. Uh, from those, 2.1 million is unemployed. That means 3.5% unemployment rate. But only 20 million is on formal labor at the social security registration system. 5%, 5 million are uh, companies or leading companies. So basically there is around 35 million informal employees. And that's, that's a very big number. That's why uh, the International Labor Organization claims that Mexico should prior, prioritize this uh, formalization of, of working people. Actually, these figures have not changed much in the last 20 years. I mean, this is not due to the pandemics. This is due to the endemic problematic of informality in Mexico. Also in Egypt publicized information on the manufacturing sector indicators for November, 2021. Uh, on personnel, they grow 0.1% on the month and 3.1% on the year, weak, but with growth. On hours worked, 0.1% on the month, 3.4% on the year. And on income, average income, Decrease 0.8% on the month and decrease 4% on the year. That's that's complex because it has to be analyzed, analyzing along the increases on minimum wage, which are strong in Mexico in the few, last few years. And that implies that something is happening on the manufacturing sector in Mexico. In terms of uh, labor law, one of the laws that are being discussed is how to work along the labor rights that should, at least under the consideration of, of the legislature in Mexico, that should receive labor rights, full labor rights, by working on companies like Uber or Didi or Rappi or some of those. And this is gonna begin a, a discussion, but there's some light in the end of the tunnel that shows that the discussion will go after a flexible labor system. That will be interesting because it will support the segment of the of, of that segment of the economy, but also it might show in the future that flexibility in labor is better than an, unfl an unflexible uh, or rigid law that we have. On Thursday, the Department of Labor in the U.S. exposed the unemployment insurance weekly claims with an increase of 55,000 to 286,000 on the week ending January 15. Uh, this is due to the pandemic. This is due to the problems that the US is facing with Omicron variant of COVID-19. Uh, but the four, four week moving average stood at 1,664,250 uh, claims, which implies a decrease of 55,250 claims. So the, the moment is bad, but the trend is good. That's basically what it means. In other news, the Bureau, uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics showed that for the four quarter, no, that for 2021, the full year, union members declined in 241,000 to only 14 million persons 
belonging to unions. That's weird in terms of the following argument. If the U.S. is uh, facing surgery in labor and people is claiming for more wages, it will be like easier to get better wages through unions, but it's not working. Something is happening in terms of unions. Uh, state job openings and labor turnout for the fourth quarter in the United States, no, for November in the United States, sorry. Job openings rates decreased in 16 states, increased in three states, and there was no change in 31 states and District of Columbia. So also the trend in labor in the final part of the 2021 and the beginning of 2022 is not necessarily good. It's good in terms that there's employment and there's need for employees, but it's not being generated as it should, uh, whether it's the pandemics, the income situation or whatever, but there's a situation on labor there. And finally, news, Toyota is decreasing its production in Japan, given the pandemics, given the surgery on uh, chips and the surgery on labor, they are deciding to decrease the production of their vehicles uh, because, well, they don't, they're not fa facing how to, to basically build them, you know? Well, now let's talk about the uh, events that we had last week. And well, it's showing here that the perspectives for um, economic uh, quarterly perspectives from IMEF was on last Wednesday at a very important and good event led by Mario Correa, who is the president of the economic committee in, in, at IMEF, and along his uh, peers from that committee. Um, they talked specifically, one of the things that took my, my attention, uh, they talked specifically about the possibility of the Federal Reserve to increase its rate three times in 2022. When we expected that they will increase rates until the late 2023. So inflation is putting a lot of pressure at the Fed. On uh, Wednesday, I made a presentation on, ta on the tax reform 2022 for Grupo Palco, a custom broker agent here in Juarez. So uh, here you can see the link to access it. It's in Spanish, but it's, a, it's an important information for companies in Mexico or regarding links with Mexico. On Thursday, ANADE, the National uh, Lawyers, uh, Business Lawyers uh, Organization, made the event called What Will Come on Labor Laws for 2022. We are implementing the constitutional changes from 2017, which implies shifting from labor uh, resolution, but executive entities to labor courts under the judicial power. We are facing the outsourcing changes from 2021. We are facing the home office changes from 2021. And we will be facing probably the situation on apps like Uber, Didi, and uh, Rappi. And finally, today, uh, Mario Correa, the president of the Economic Committee at uh, IMEF, showed us at the National uh, Directive Council uh, the basic information on the uh, economic perspectives from his point of view. And things like, well, IMEF is expecting 2.7% growth in 2022, but he said that he's expecting 1.5%. Worst, even, you know, uh, he mentioned things like uh, the sale of city group. He mentioned things along the public policies like the, electro the electric reform that has been discussed at the uh, open parliament this week in the Congress, in the Mexican Congress. So elements that are worrisome. What happened at uh, Solo Negocios Radio? On Monday, Guillermo Soria from CONAFI exposed from the tax reform. On Tuesday, Emmanuel Garcia and Luis Enrique Gutierrez Casas exposed uh, general topics on economics, on the economic of, uh, economics of Mexico. On Wednesday, I talked about the World Justice Project uh, Rule of Index 2022 Insights, the basic summary of the uh, uh, results for this year. On, on Thursday, UTEC and Adriana Parada interviewed people from Casconaleb with their training 
programs for manufacturing companies and for people in Juarez. And I talked about the Mexican and US economy today uh, on the radio program. Finally, next week on events, another will have um, tax uh, issues from states, state tax issues for 2022 on Thursday, on Tuesday, excuse me. IMEF will show tax reform also on Tuesday. Another will show economics and social perspectives for uh, 2022 on Wednesday. Also on Wednesday, IMEF in the city of Mexico will show the event CFO's Vision 2022. And finally, uh, IMEF is having the technology evolution and the relationship with CFOs in the, in the words of Raul Ron, member of IMEF at Nuevo León. And well, finally, if you have tax concerns for this new tax reform 2022, don't hesitate on calling us, hear the information, and we will be able to give you an analysis specifically for your economic activity. Thank you for your attention. Have a great week, weekend, and see you next week.